210-483-3700 from outside of the United States. Now, here is our host. And welcome, friends, to this edition of the Grace Hour. Once again, broadcasting live right here from our studios, which are located at the home of the Greater Grace World Outreach in Baltimore, Maryland. Great to be with you, friends, as we begin a brand new week of broadcasting live right here in the Grace Hour. And we want to welcome you to this Monday edition of our broadcast. And, of course, with each new week of broadcasting, we have a brand new theme. This week's theme, Set Your Heart Upon God. And that will be a great theme to talk about and to develop with you all week long right here in our broadcasts. And, of course, following today's devotional message, we invite you to join us live on the Grace Hour with your phone calls. Your questions, comments, testimonies, counseling needs, and prayer requests are all welcome here on the broadcast. And all you need to do to join us is get to a phone and dial one of the following numbers. Toll free in North America. That number is 800-338-7060. Again, that's the toll-free number in all of North America, 800-338-7060. And the local number for all of our listeners here in the greater Baltimore area, 410-483-3700. And, of course, if you're calling us outside of North America, you too would dial that number, 410-483-3700. I want to welcome our local listeners tuning in on WRBS. You can find that particular station on your AM dial, 1230 on your AM dial. Welcome our local listeners right here in Baltimore. Thank you for joining us. And again, we want to remind you that we're on, on live for the first half hour on your local station. And then, of course, if you can, you can transition over to the Internet at gracehour.org. Join us for the full hour-long broadcast. It would be a pleasure to have you do that with us today. Everyone else is listening on the internet at gracehour.org around the globe. We want to welcome our listeners tuning in live on the internet, as well as those of you that are watching on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Thanks so much for joining us. Friends, uh, as you know or may not know, that coming up next month right here at the Greater Grace World Outreach in Baltimore, we'll be holding and hosting our international convention. Of course, last year we did have somewhat of a downsized international convention. It was a great time, no question about it, but many uh, were unable to come because of the pandemic. I think that we're going to see, uh, well, we're going to see a great turnout coming up next month. It's the last full week in June, beginning on June 21st, and taking us through that entire week right up till Saturday, and of course Sunday, if you can stay with us and join us for our services. It's going to be a great week, friends. It always is Uh, amazing folks that will come in from around the country and around the globe to join us as we celebrate Christ and lift him up so that all of us can see him even more clearly. And to get things started at the International Convention, Maryland Bible College and Seminary will hold its annual golf tournament. And it's going to be held once again at the Maryland Golf and Country Club. And this is a prestigious golf course, friends. It's located in McPhail Road in Bel Air, Maryland, and uh, they've hosted this tournament now for a number of years, and the fellowship is outstanding, the golf is equally as good, and you won't want to miss it. So if you are a golfer, or perhaps like me, <laughs> you, you go and you golf, but if you can call it that, come on out and join us. It's a great time to be together with the body of Christ, and the golfers have a great time, and there's even a provision for the non-golfers. Pardon me, the non-golfers, you're welcome to come to the luncheon for only $25. And remember, when you come out and support the NBCNS Golf Tournament, you're helping to support future missionaries, future pastors, as these funds are used to bring people from overseas into our Bible college and to help those that need some assistance. So you'll be helping to train the next generation to reach the world with the gospel. It all happens, again, the first day of the International Convention. The 21st of June begins at 7.30 a.m. And again, they get out in the golf course at 9 a.m. That's after registration and some breakfast and coffee with everyone that comes. It'll be a great, great day. We hope you'll make it. Right now, friends, let's turn our attention 
to today's devotional message. Pastor Ronaldo Brown is in the studio with us to bring today's word. Awesome, awesome. Another great week on the Grace Hour, the theme about the heart of God and having our heart fixed towards God. Uh, one of the ways that I, I keep my heart fixed on God, I get my heart motivated for God, is I refresh myself with the gospel. Nothing refreshes my heart. Nothing reveals the heart of God to me in a personal, practical way like the gospel. Um, it's when you hear the gospel and like in John 3.13 and John 3.16 and John 3.36, when you hear the gospel, you hear the heart of God. The heart of God comes out. Uh, there's a word that I like there, um, that the word whosoever. Is that not the heart of God? Whosoever. It's one of those wonderful words that whenever you use it in a sentence, it means everybody. There's no exclusions. There's no separation. It's everybody. It's like God has got his arms wide open to everybody. God is after everybody. Everybody's qualified. Everybody's welcome. The gospel. The gospel is how I refresh my heart in the heart of God. And sometimes I find that difficult. Um, sometimes you, you have a ministry to a person or you have interaction with a person and the person is rude or the person is bad or the person that does, they might even be carnal. They might be into a bad thing. And the first thing you want to do is judge what they do and judge them according to what they do. And you can even have a negative thought about that person. Like that person's bad. That person's proud. I remember one time in ministry, there was a person that I thought this person doesn't want God. This person's carnal. This person's proud. This person, I had, I had this long list of indictments against this person in my mind. And then God so gently reminded me that I love that person. I have a heart for that person. And you can't think that way about that person because I don't think that way about that person. I have a heart for that person. God's heart is not just for the bad people. God's heart is for whosoever. God's heart towards people is alive and well. I love that picture of whosoever. It's a, I see it like this. It's a picture of a desirous God with a big heart for everybody. A desirous God with a big heart for everybody. And he's got a heart for everybody. And then in 2 Peter 3, 9, he says at the end of the verse, he says, but God is long suffering towards us. How can you be long suffering without a big heart? And then he says these two key words. He's not willing. He doesn't say he's not able. He says he's not willing. In John 3, 16, he provided a provision so that none would perish. And then in 2 Peter 3, 9, he says he's not willing that any should perish. So he's got a way for you not to perish. He also has a will that you don't perish. That, that no one should perish, but that all would respond to God. That is the heart of God. God is never not for you. God's heart is always for you. Even when you're not for him, his heart is for you. Uh, he's faithful in 2 Timothy 2.13 to have that heart. I love that part. Whosoever doesn't have to perish and whosoever, I don't want you to perish. That refreshes my heart about the heart of God. The heart of God, he's not willing. It's not his will. It's not his purpose. It's not his desire. It's not his wish. Not one time, not one time that any should perish. The plan of God is not separation from man. The plan of God is not to get away from us. In fact, so much so that when we got away from God, God came after us. In John chapter 1, verse 14, he became a man. In Philippians 2, 5 through 7, he added humanity to his divinity. I'm trying to think of how many other ways he could have done this without getting near us. He's God. He could have solved this any kind of way he wanted to. He could have created a plan that didn't require him to become a man, that didn't require him to come to the earth. And yet his plan included that because of his heart because of his heart, the heart of God, the heart of God. Someone once asked me, what is missions? What, what, Pastor Ronaldo, what do you call missions? I like to think of it two ways. I like to think of it as a loving God with an active heart for people. And then I think of it another way. It's God's heart active in people to people. So two things, a loving God who has an active heart for people. 
I find that in the gospel. And then God's heart active in people towards people. I find that in the gospel when we share the gospel. That's God's heart. That's, that's missions. That's the activity of God's heart for people and the activity of God's heart to people. That's missions. God's heart is the key. God's heart is the starting point of all spiritual motivation towards people. That is it. And that is also the key to our, our relationship with God. Many times if I look at my own heart, my, my own heart betrays me. Not only does my own heart betray me, it betrays my, des my, my desire for God. It betrays God. My heart betrays God. I need something greater than my heart in a relationship with God. I need his heart in his relationship. That's the power of our mission. God's heart. God's heart. Amazing what God's heart can do in a friendship. What God's, having God's heart can do in a marriage, in a church, in a community. Having God's heart. Revealing God's heart. And over the years, I've seen... God move in people's lives. I've seen God take people and use them tremendously for the kingdom. And underneath all of that is the heart of God, not just for people, but in people, through people, having God's heart. Because if I have results without God's heart, I've missed, it's, it's not the work of God. It's God's heart in God's work. God's heart in God's work. I mean, often we can be sincere. We, we can pursue God's results for our family. We can pursue God's results for our, for our children. We can pursue God's heart, God's results rather for our, our marriages and for our work and for our ministry. We can pursue God's results, but without God's heart. And if you don't have God's heart, whatever you produce does not have the life of God. Is it not interesting? In Romans 5, 5, the love of God is shed abroad where? It's shed abroad in our hearts. Where is that love shed abroad at? It's shed abroad in the, the heart of God that's in us in Ezekiel chapter 36, 26. We can do a lot of damage to people. We can hurt people when we will operate outside of God's heart. Uh, we, 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 our mission can be corrupted without God's heart. Our mission can lose its way without God's heart. Because my natural heart, my natural heart, not the heart of God in Ezekiel 36, 26, but my natural heart has a condition. In Jeremiah 17, 9, it has a condition. I have a heart condition. The natural man has a heart condition. He has heart problems because he's got a corrupted heart. See this Mark 7, 21 through 24 corrupted heart has a heart condition. And many times I want to minister with my heart, but my heart is insufficient for the plan of God. My heart is insufficient for the work of God. My heart is insufficient for the ministry of God. My heart is insufficient for my relationship with God. It's insufficient. My heart can never have a heart of whosoever. My heart is selfish. My heart is concerned about me. It says in Proverbs 28 verse 26, he that trusts in his own heart, is a fool. And how often do we live our life trusting in our own heart? Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6 talks about not trusting in our heart, not leaning on our own understanding, but so easy to trust your own heart. And God says, your heart is insufficient for the work of God, but it's my heart. It's my heart. My heart is what's necessary. Because when I operate in my own heart, the heart conditions of my, the condition of my heart can affect my life. In Matthew 24, 12, I can have a cold heart. In Isaiah 44, 20, I can have a deceived heart that accepts lies and lives in a lie and repeats the lie and defends the lie. I can have a, def I, I have a, in Mark 16, 14, I have a hardened heart. My heart can be so wicked at times in Jeremiah 17. I can have a stressed heart in Luke 8, verse 14. Many of us are experiencing that. I can have a wounded heart in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 6. I can have a guilty heart in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. This is, the, this is my con heart condition without the heart of God. I can even have a heart that lacks understanding in Ephesians 4, 18. These are heart conditions. And it, it, it seems like these are the type of situations we get into when we walk in in the plan of God outside of God's heart, we have heart conditions. We have a heart condition. It's a heart condition is just my natural heart absent from the heart of God. It's a heart condition. And I have this form of godliness in 2 Timothy 3 verse 5 that denies power. 
I can have, even with my natural heart, I may walk in morality in John chapter 8, verses 5 to, through 10, without spirituality. I can execute right, but not walk in righteousness in a natural heart. It's the heart of God. It's the heart of God. God has called me to walk in the heart of God. We have been gifted to fellowship and walk in the heart of God. And there is the key word right there, fellowship, moving beyond spiritual possession into spiritual participation in Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. Because we have been gifted with the heart of God in Ezekiel 36, 26. So how do I move? How do I have an operation from the heart condition of the natural heart into the heart of God? Because I cannot have a heart that's fixed if it's a natural heart. My heart is fixed to God, does not speak about my natural heart. It speaks about the spiritual heart of God in Ezekiel 36, 26 that's in me and the spirit of God that we have been gifted with in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, that quickens me and leads me beyond my natural thinking, beyond my natural heart, which is insufficient for the work of God, which is insufficient for whosoever. But the heart of God in me in Ezekiel 36, 26, there is space for whosoever. It takes the Holy Spirit to take me from the natural to the spiritual. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1946, first comes the natural, then comes the spiritual, and the natural is insufficient for the spiritual, but the spiritual can deal with the natural. So the Holy Spirit in your life and in my life can deal with my natural heart and lead me to the rock that's higher than I and lead me to the heart of God. And all of a sudden, you're walking and talking and thinking with the heart of God and you have compassion in your heart. You have motivation in your heart. You can continue to love the unlovely. You can continue to forgive. You can continue to minister. And there are people that don't like it, don't observe it, and don't appreciate it, and you've got God's heart anyway for them. So you can minister and you can minister, and it's not based on reciprocation, but it's based on revelation. You've got a revelation of God's heart, so so and so doesn't respond to me, they don't like me, they mistreat me, it's okay. I've got God's love for that person because I have God's heart for that person. So I would that even the people that I don't like, would I would that they would not perish. I would that the enemies of God would not perish. I would that even people I think don't deserve God would not perish because God does not want them to perish. I have God's heart. And when I fellowship in the spirit of God, I am empowered to walk in the heart of God. And there is the key. It is the Holy Spirit that helps me to walk in the spirit, in the heart of God. Then my heart is fixed. The spiritual heart can be fixed because the natural heart has a condition called corruption. The natural, heart, the natural heart cannot be fixed. And if you try to say, okay, I'm going to fix my heart towards God, if you're using the natural heart, you will fail. Have, Philippians chapter 3, have no confidence in the flesh. And many times we say, oh, I've got God's heart for this thing, but we don't have capacity. The reason why I don't have capacity is because I'm not operating in God's heart. I'm trying to make it happen in the natural heart. And God says this, I didn't just give you my heart. I like how Ezekiel 36 brings it out in 26 and 25. It doesn't just say we got a new heart. It also says we got the spirit. God makes sure he gave you the engine that drives God's heart. God's spirit in our life drives God's heart. Imagine if you had God's heart and God said, make it work. You would try in the flesh to make God's heart work, but it's impossible. It takes God to bring God forward in my heart. It takes God to bring God through my life. It takes God. Fellowship with God in the new heart comes through the spirit. Fellowship in the new heart takes us places in John 21, 18. We might not want to go, see? And when you operate in the new heart through the new spirit, the Holy Spirit, your heart can be fixed. You can experience spiritual concentration. You can experience expanded capacity, expanded compassion, expanded long suffering, expanded mercy. What's underneath all that? That is the heart of God. So when I say my heart is fixed, I'm saying by faith, mixing faith with who God is and what God has said, mixing faith with what God is leading me to do. I Engage the Holy Spirit in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. I am quickened by the Holy Spirit in Romans chapter 8, verse 11. I am led by the Spirit in Romans chapter 8, verse 14. And I'm led in the new heart and the motivation that the love of God is shed abroad in Romans 5, 5 in my heart is the very heart of God. Then I can have God's heart for God's people around the world and wherever God would have me. And all of a sudden I become a light that shines and I can change my world. I can win my world. I want to 
encourage you this morning. You can win your world. You can win your world. When God sent his son in John 3, 16, he said, I'm sending him. He's going to have my heart. And when we have God's heart with God's gospel and God's message, we can win our world. We can win our world. We can be difference makers in this pandemic. We can be difference makers in our cities and our states and our countries. We can be difference makers because we are quickened by the spirit to walk in the heart of God. Amen. Amen. Well, that concludes the devotional portion of our broadcast today, friends. Some great thoughts to get us started on a great theme all week long right here on the Grace Hour. Set your heart on God. And, of course, that's possible, as we heard today, because we have a new heart that God has placed within us. Imagine what he did. You talk about a heart transplant. He took out the old, corruptible, broken, (laughs) troubled heart of ours and replaced it with his own. So think about that. The very heart that we now have is the heart of Christ himself. Phone lines are open. You can join us. We'd love to take your phone calls uh, beginning now in the first half of the broadcast. And then, of course, as we move into the second half, we will devote that second half hour to your phone calls. All you need to do is get to a phone and dial one of these numbers. Toll free, 800 338 7060. And that local number, if you're listening here in the Baltimore area or perhaps overseas, 410 483 3700. Would love to hear from you and would love to take your thoughts as we start to develop this theme. And a great start it was on this Monday afternoon with setting your heart on God. Boy, there are there will never be a time when we don't need uh, that kind of adjustment in our lives. Yes. Uh, it's so easy to be sidetracked, so easy to be distracted, so easy to get caught up with some other pressing details or a crisis that we face. And all of a sudden, you know, we take our eyes off the one who is walking toward us on the water and we start to look at the storm waves mm-hmm. rather than the storm walker. It, it just happens, and we just need that adjustment to once again realign and set our hearts on him. And as we do, boy, I mean, the, the promise of Isaiah 26.3 is a real yes. promise from God. And it, it's, he will, you know, we'll have perfect peace mm-hmm. if we can keep our hearts and minds simply stayed on him. That's good stuff. I like that Isaiah 26.3, Pastor Love. That is so good. I think sometimes... Um, it's hard. You talk to believers, it's hard to see if they're operating in the old heart or the new heart. Um, the same question that many believers ask is, am I, am I, am I spirit-filled or not? But I would apply to the, the, the question about, am I operating in the old heart or the new heart? One of the checks would be capacity. When you're operating in the old heart, you don't have the legs for the walk with God. You don't have the strength. You don't have the capacity. It's shocking how frail the old heart is. The frail heart is easily offended, easily wounded, petty, discouraged. It it is all these negative emotions that that funnel inside of it. Um, I think Matthew 24, 12 kind of brings it out. It says the love of many waxes cold. It literally speaks about a waning capacity. Like at one point it was okay. Because you, you can get a little bit with natural love, but at a certain point, it starts to peter out. Like, it's the exact opposite of 1 Corinthians 13, 7, where the love of God never fails. It just continues. But Matthew 24, 12, it kind of peters out. And it's the same thing with, when you're operating in the, your natural heart. You're going to find you don't have the heart for this. You don't have the heart to walk with God. You don't have the heart to deal with people. You don't, your, your ministry is not whosoever. It's whoever, whoever. It's not whosoever, it's whoever. Like, I'm kind of selective a little bit. I'm a little subjective. Or catch me tomorrow, I'm tired. It's Monday, and I, I, don't, I, I got Monday blues. I don't have the time for you. But when I, when I operate in the Spirit, it launches me into the heart of God, and all of a sudden, I can listen to one more person. I, could, I move from toleration 
to ministry. I'm not just tolerating that person. I've got God's heart for that person. But in the flesh, I don't like that person. I don't like this job. I don't like this thing. But when you've got God's heart, man, you can run a long, long time. And you don't even get tired. You don't even notice. In fact, it, the second thing is you have joy. So when you know you're in the natural heart, there's no joy. So if one of the first checks is, okay, I don't have capacity right now. I'm definitely running in the natural heart. Number two, my joy is gone. This is clearly, I'm clearly not walking in the, in the, in the heart of God. I'm in the natural heart. Those are two good checks and there's many others we can think of that I can know. I mean, I'm operating in the natural heart or the spirit or the, or the, or the heart of God rather. Because the heart of God, there's so much room. It's, um, there's so much space. Isaiah, uh, Psalm 18, 19 talks about the large place. God brings me into a large place. The heart of God is a large place. Why do I use the word large? Because it says in John 3, 16, whosoever, whosoever is a large place. So if the heart of God says whosoever, when I'm operating in the heart of God, I got a lot of room. I got a lot of room. Mm. Nothing like a large place. Mm. Nothing like a lot of room. It's like sending a small child into a big gymnasium. They just start running. Or be, <laughs> me in a small car. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But they do, you know, you put a, a little, a small child in a big gymnasium, they just, they just want to run because oh it's a big room, yeah. you know? They don't want to sit there. They, they want to move. Yes. Well, friends, we want you to move. We want you to move and pick up your phone, and we want you to give us a call at 800-338-7060. And the local number, of course, 410-483-3700. And uh, we will uh, reach the halfway moment here in just a couple of seconds. But we want to remind you that the second half of the broadcast will be dedicated to your phone calls. And all you need to do is get to a phone and dial one of those numbers. We'd love to hear from you. Um, what does it mean for you to set your heart on God? We'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Uh, contribute to the program that way by sharing with us your portion your portion is always welcome and needed and necessary right here on the Grace Hour. So we'll sign off on our local station, thanking those of you that joined us today there. And if you can, we want to encourage you to transition over to the internet at gracehour.org. That way you can stay with us because we'd love to have you for the next half hour as well. So everyone that can, stay right where you are. For those of you that cannot, we'll see you tomorrow on the Tuesday edition of the Grace Hour. We're back with you live at gracehour.org and want to thank you, friends, for being with us, staying with us. Quite a number of you have done just that, as we can see on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Uh, although the phone lines are still quite quiet, we are waiting to hear from you. So if you're thinking about it, act on that thought. And again, uh, pick up the phone and give us a call. Got a few thoughts coming in on Facebook Live. Carol. Mass and Gill is listening, I believe, out in the Pittsburgh area. Thank you, Carol. Great to have you with us today. Tess Flores from Malmo, Sweden. Say, may we have the rich love of God, our Savior, perfected in us as single people, married, or those in between. And sending her greetings once again from Malmo, Sweden. Tess is a, a consistent, regular listener to the Grace Hour, and we really appreciate that. Thea writes in, uh, God's heart in me, his spirit motivates me and has his revelation of his love and ministers and empowers me to be available to whatever God prods me to do in the spirit, fixes me so I can move forward in his new heart. Amen. And Dave Grabowski on Cape Cod says, wow, Pastor Ronaldo, uh, don't get on fire or anything. <laughs> what a portion. Thanks so much. And Tony has said, uh, who, who has the mind of Christ? Well, we have the mind of Christ mm -hmm. because he is, of course, beautiful for our situations. And we do. We have God's heart. We have God's mind. Mm. As you mentioned, we have God's spirit. We have the joy of the Lord. We have all of God's promises. And boy, those promises. I was thinking today, earlier, uh, Pastor, about how, you know, when it comes to our relationship with God, it's never performance based, mm. it's always promise built. Mm. And, you know, I, I ran into a, a gentleman the other day, and he, he is an individual. I would describe him this way, and because of it's, it's because of his denomination. It's because of where he's plugged in. But it's really 
performance based. Wow. And it's so sad because, you know, inevitably when somebody is operating and it's a performance based kind of faith, inevitably it's going to lead to this conclusion. Well, if you don't toe the line, you're going to be on the outside looking in. Yeah. You're going to be able to lose your salvation because that's the nature of a performance based faith. You're going to have to do all the heavy lifting. You're going to have to do all the hard work. And if you don't toe the line and if you don't reach up to the par, at least par, if not go beyond it, you are going to be on the outside looking in. And of course, I kind of <sighs> pressed this individual the other day. I pressed him to the point where he actually would come out and admit it. And he did. Wow. And it was kind of sad. And I, of course, immediately said, you know what? We're not on the same page. Because it's, it's more, some people would say, well, why would you want to make that an issue? This whole business of once saved, always saved, the doctrine of eternal security. Why would you want to make that? Isn't that a secondary thing? No, it isn't. Because eternal security represents the very heart of God, the very character of God. Exactly. And if you think that that's something that isn't important or necessary to, to speak up about if somebody that believes otherwise, you're kidding yourself. It's about the very character and nature of God. It's, it's the, it talks about the very power. It really goes back to what you said. It's the heart of God. Yeah. When you, when you read John 3.16, you don't read a, a, a verse about help. Um, you read a verse about hope. And the reason why you, re, you get hope out of the gospel is because you hear the heart of God. Uh, no one puts their heart into something with the possibility. If, if God put his heart into anything, there's going to be a measure of certainty to that. There's got to be certainty to that. And why, if your heart is engaged, why would you make the solution unachievable? Why would God ask a corrupt man to perform? <laughs> you can't say that we're, in a, we're unable to perform and then ask for performance. Uh, Philippians 2.13, God said, it is God both to will and to do. So what do you do with that verse? But I often think about it like this. I think we're asking the wrong question. When you look at salvation, and I always find with most folks, the guys that question salvation don't understand the doctrine of salvation. Because if you understood the doctrine of salvation, there would be no, there really is no room for you to doubt that. But I always think this question, instead of asking me, can I lose my salvation? Can God lose me? Because what you're saying, so all the praise and all the worship, when you talk about how mighty God is, how amazing God is, how omnipotent God is, your God is, 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 is faulty. Uh, he, he's, he's, he's impotent because he can lose you. I mean, uh, he, he can set the stars in the skies, but he can also lose you. Because if salvation is me grabbing God, then okay, yeah, I, I agree, I can lose my salvation. But if salvation is God grabbing me, what you're saying is that God can't hold me. His strength, his power, his character is not strong enough to hold me. So in John 10, 28, the son let go. In John 10, 29, the father let go. In Ephesians 1, 13, the spirit walked out. So you're asking a lot of work. It seems like there's almost more work to lose me than it was to get me. It just doesn't sound like the heart of God. When you listen to a preacher preach, you listen to someone talking, I can almost like to close my eyes and listen. I'm listening for the heart of God. When I hear the heart of God, I'll hear unconditional love. I'll hear the finished work. I'll hear the character of God. I'll, 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 I'll hear his heart. I'll hear his heart. But when, if I'm not careful, I'm so busy looking at his hands that I missed his heart. Because we do that with people. We look at their hands, what they do. And we don't look at their heart. And many times we judge them based on their hands and not their heart. Uh, and with God, I, I think that's where we fall short of the glory of God. When you miss the heart of God, you fall short of his glory. You miss that. Uh, and the sad thing is, those who don't believe that once saved, always saved, you can never really understand the complete heart of God. Because your God is effective to a point. He loves you to a point. He's for you to a point. And the point is entirely controlled by you. You've actually reduced God to less than you. You've reduced God to smaller than you. He's not just, he's not, your God's not just is too small. Your God is smaller than you because he's manipulable to you. I can manipulate God through my sin to release me. You make the cross impotent. 
this is, 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 I think sometimes people try to isolate doctrine, Pastor Love, when all of it is connected in John 10, 35. So you pull that brick out of my house. You can't try to pull out a brick without unraveling the whole thing. Everything, redemption, propitiation, sanct- everything is connected. It's all part. So you can't pull out one brick. My activity shouldn't unpull everything. But I think it's just another form of manipulation where religion tries to to conform behavior, uh, behavior modification through threats and indictments. And it's from, from the beginning of the church, there's always been people that feel that their salvation is in their control. Yeah. You know, in, in our conversation with this gentleman, he kept um, making this statement, you know, is, is Christ our example? And, you know, in, in one sense, you could say, well, well, of course, of course he is. But I said to him, yes, he's our example in terms of the way he walked before God and pleased his father and set aside his own will uh, for the will of his father. All of that is true. But, you know, before Christ is our example, he's our savior. Yes. He's our redeemer. He's our only hope. And, you know, you could go back to the beginning and say to this gentleman, you know, well, what did you do? Were you able to do anything to be saved to begin with? And the answer is always no. It's kind of a strange approach towards yeah. what he calls the gospel because he'd admit and say, no, you, 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 of course I couldn't do it. But like the Galatians, they seem to always head in this direction. Once you are saved, now the maintenance of your yes. salvation falls squarely on your shoulders. And that's where, you know, there's such a disconnect. I mean, we cannot save ourselves uh, you know, we we can no more maintain our salvation than we could attain it in the first place. And and they miss that. So they eventually move into this performance base faith, which now the responsibility of you or how they would say it, enduring to the end is so important. Yeah. And again, over and over again, is Christ our, and really what he was getting to when he was making that statement, is Christ our example enough? He was talking about living an impeccable life, yeah. an imp- a perfect life. Colossians 2, 6, as you have received Christ, what did you receive? As you have received Christ, so walk ye in him. The salvation method is the sanctification method. How you began that way is how you walk that way. That's the, I I feel like it's pride really, because since I had nothing to do to to get it, I got to get credit somewhere. So I can't get it in the front. Let me get it on the back end. Uh, You know what? I didn't get the, it's me now. It's all me. It's pride. And I also find this true, Pastor Love. A lot of guys that struggle with total depravity struggle with total salvation. Mm-hmm. If they don't believe that they're totally without, there's no good in you, then they can't believe that they're totally saved. The same cracks that are in their doctrine of total depravity are in their, are in their salvation. It's the same mindset. Yeah. It's no amazing. Question. No question about it. So we're just so grateful for the finished work of Christ. Amen. Um, because, you know, that is God's heart. Mm. Um, he has done it all. And to just recognize, and I, and I loved, you know, at the outset of your devotional today, uh, you said God's arms are open to all. Everybody is qualified. Well, how? Because they're sinful. Yes. <laughs> they're utterly and completely sinful. That's the qualification that you need to meet. And strangely enough, you might assume that anybody would say, well, I need that. But some people say no. Wow. Um, You know, I'm not saying they will make a statement such like this. Well, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm certainly not as bad as these people over here. So now (laughs) they're moving into the relative righteousness. And that's just a whole nother problem altogether where they're comparing themselves among themselves. That's ridiculous and foolish. You don't want to go down that road because you'll either end up proud and arrogant or you'll have a poor self-image and you won't see yourself as a candidate for grace. Well, lots to talk about, friends. This is such a great theme. We mentioned it at the outset of the program today, and we'll be developing it all week long right here on the Grace Hour. But give us a call. Those phone lines are open, and we know that many of you are listening, tuning into the Grace Hour. This is a great time for you to pick up that phone and dial one of those numbers. 800-338-7060 is the toll-free number. 
in all of North America. And the local number, 410-483-3700. When you live in your natural heart or your own heart, the, the reason why it says um, that it's a fool who trusts in his own heart, there's a reason why it's because you're spiritually not connected to the mind of God. The natural, the natural heart is driven by the, by the human spirit. And the fruit of that will be natural things. Uh, uh, yeah, he trusts in his own heart is a fool in Proverbs 28, 26. Your own heart will lead to heart conditions in your life. Your, living in your own heart will make your heart cold. It will make your heart, uh, you'll have all these different side effects of the fall in your life because you're walking in the human spirit in the natural heart. And the natural heart is deceitfully wicked. When you live for extended periods of time in your natural heart, you don't know how bad you can be. It's detrimental to your growth with God and your life with God. Extended long seasons of living in the old heart and not the new heart can have a result into your life that, is, that has side effects physiological side effects. You could be cold. You can be anxious. You can be stressed. You can be disturbed. And that's someone living in the old heart. And I cannot, the thing is, we're not talking about positive thinking. We're not talking about, I'm going to be motivated to do good things. You can do good things in the natural heart. That's called the good side of the tree. You can do good things. That's altruism. You can do good without God, but you can't do God without the heart of God. Uh, uh, you can do a lot of things. People do a lot of things in the world that are good. They're not bad. They're good. But our relationship with God is not on the, the plane of good and bad. Our relationship with God is on a higher plane. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. We seek our affections on things that are above. A higher plane. Higher plane. 1 Timothy 4 verse 7. We exercise ourselves towards godliness. We don't make effort. That's not Christianity. I'm making an effort. I'm trying harder. But more importantly, it's me engaging God. Engaging God is not a try. It's an engagement. It's a, it's a desire. I desire. I'm not trying to produce something. It's just me engaging God by faith and fellowshipping with God. And my faith decision to walk in the spirit will lead me into operating from the heart of God, motivated by the love of God, in my life, in my daily life. Human goodness, it's dangerous. It can blind us to the truth of God's saving and keeping grace. Let's go to the phones. Lise is joining us from Montreal, Canada. Lise, great to have you with us. Welcome. Yes, good afternoon, pastors. Pastor Ronaldo, Pastor Love. Bonjour. And, um, the message was... Bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> we need prayers this afternoon. I'm calling for prayers. <laughs> okay. Because uh, Rene Bella is bringing me in a new adventure of soul winning. Now we're gonna go this afternoon. This here it's a holiday. Uh, it's a holiday today, and so Rene is not working. So we're going right on the street because our area where we live is is is, is con Road construction everywhere. Mm -hmm. Every it's unbelievable. I mean, it, it makes people uh, crazy. But I mean, uh, at the same time, the cars they they around three o'clock. It's all bumper to bumper everywhere. Okay, in this area. So we're going on the street, and we're gonna give the tracks to the driver. You know, we're gonna, you know, that. You know, yeah. is, is, it, uh, is, it, is it understandable? Yes, Perfect. absolutely. So, but, I mean, it's the first time. It's the first time we do that. I mean, we saw win uh, many times a week. But this time on the streets, like, because uh, another trend in Montreal that we have a lot of beggars everywhere. And the beggars, they, you know, they are not, they are not killed. People pay attention to them. And... Uh, so Rene said, if the beggars speak to the drivers, uh, why can't we speak to them also? Wow. So beautiful. another way, because we're trying to reach all kinds of people. Now we're going to talk to Mercedes drivers and big cars. And I need, I need the proverb. It's the proverb 24. Uh, 
24, 23, it says, uh, it is not good to have respect of persons and judgment, you know? Yes. And I have to, I have to battle against that because some, some people, they intimidate me. Is that how you say? Yes. You know, I become intimidated, you know, like, uh, like the other day in a parking, like, uh, we were, you know, finishing and almost praying uh, and the prayer at the end uh, of our group. And um, came, came a car, nice convertible white car with the music very loud. And, you know, the guy came and he, he, he parked right not far from us. And one of our one of our team members, she went right away, you know, to the guy. And I thought... Wow, I mean, I mean, I admire that. You know, I would have never. And the guy, the, you know, he stopped the music right away, and he accepted the the track. And you know, I mean, we we would be surprised. Sometimes we say no. I mean, this person will not uh, want to talk about Jesus. And sometimes, no, and the opposite. They are very happy. You know. Mm. So I want to. I want to be like that. Me too. You know. So Beautiful. that's it. So do you want to pray for us? Of course we do. <laughs> well, Father, we pray. Uh, first of all, we pray for Lise and Renee and others that may be joining them. Keep them safe uh, mm. as they're out there dodging the yeah. traffic. But we also pray for a great response as they give out these mm. gospel tracts. And may people receive them. And may people recognize mm. the need in their hearts for Christ and perhaps, Lord, it could even translate into some people coming out and visiting them at church. We just pray that you would anoint them, give them your heart mm -hmm. for souls, your love for people, help them to, again, a spirit of kindness and patience and gracious and really bless their efforts today. And they only want to see you glorified, Lord. So bless them and keep them safe yeah. and give them a great day of harvesting souls in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Have a great day. Have Thank fun. you, Lise. And we, we continue to pray that the border will be open before yeah, the international yeah, convention. Yeah, we are on, on the same page. Good, good. <laughs> Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. God okay, bless bye. you. Bye. Bye now. Bye. bye. Phone lines are open. You still have time to join us, friends, at 800 338 7060. And the local number right here in Baltimore, 410 4837. Zero, zero. Monique has written to us, says, We always forget that salvation is based upon the character and the nature of the giver, not the character and the nature of the recipient. It is the gift of God that is our salvation, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Yes. So we have nothing to boast in, but rather to rejoice that a merciful God chose and called us, and to him be all the glory. And that's, that's, that's the amazing thing about the grace of God. It does... Mm -hmm. It excludes all boasting yeah. or glorying in the flesh. And Paul said, you won't find me ever glorying in the flesh. I don't put any confidence in it, and I won't glory in it. I'll only glory in the cross of Calvary. Isn't it interesting that the flesh excludes people, but it includes boasting, and that the gospel excludes boasting, but includes people. It's interesting how it's, how diametrically the mind of God is in the mind of man and how different the way of God is in the way of the world. And really, there's only two ways. There's the way of God and all the other ways. You could say all the rest of them are the united way. <laughs> You've got the way of the world, the way of the flesh, the way of the devil. It's all united as one way. And then there's God's way. And God's way is, is motivated by God's heart. And the world's way, or the, or the united way, I call it, is all motivated by the natural heart, which can do good. But where's God's heart? Where's God's love? Where's God's spirit? Where's God's mind? Where's God's victory? Where's God's sustainability? Yeah. I mean, we're all for doing good, but it can't save you. Yeah. <laughs> Boasting is excluded yeah. when you're talking about the presence of God. Because even, even Paul, when he wrote in Romans, the fourth chapter, he's talking about Abraham. You know, he said that it, it, if Abraham or anyone else thought that they could find themselves in an acceptable position before God on the basis of, of works, he says, it's not possible. 
No. He said they, they can boast. They can boast about it, but you can't do it before God. There it is. You can't do it before God. Exodus 40, that no flesh, when, Moses, when, the, when the tabernacle was dedicated, Moses had to leave. Because the Shekinah glory, no one could be in there. I, I, 1 Corinthians one twenty on that no flesh would glory in my presence. So if you're in the presence of God, your, your boasting is excluded. Your flesh is excluded. Your pride is excluded. You can't sneak it in the door. It doesn't fit. So I can't get any praise? Is that what you're saying? Uh, let's see. The closest thought I could think of is, uh, if, well, Job, Job got praise from God. <laughs> <laughs> he bragged to Satan about him. But then you saw what he got when he got the praise. He got the warfare. So yeah. I don't know if I want that. <laughs> but, you know, someone said to me once, he said, here's, here's the deal that God puts on the table. Um, you know, you get all the benefits, but God gets all the glory. Can you live with that? And my answer is absolutely. Sign me up. Absolutely. I'll take all the benefits as long as God gets all the glory. All right, let's go back to the phones. Let's start with David up in South Bristol, Maine. Uh, hi, Dave, and welcome to the broadcast. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, our uh, total depravity up against uh, the ransom that has been paid for our salvation in our life uh, is pretty striking. And... Uh, been listening to C.S. Lewis audio tapes uh, early every morning here, and uh, it's really bust me. And uh, and uh, it's it's shocking the the contrast between what's going on in the devil's world right now and uh, in the church and uh, the finished work is. Uh, uh, the only thing I can rest in. Amen. Uh, yeah. Because uh, I don't seem to be capable of keeping any promises or doing any good works. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good confession. Yeah. That's a good confession, Dave. Yeah. So, uh, God bless you both. And uh, uh, the hideous strength, that hideous strength is uh, the name of the series. And uh, just wanted to share that. All right. It. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Great to Thank hear you. from you. Bye-bye. All right. From South Bristol, Maine, we're going out to Las Vegas, Nevada. Pastor John Perkins is joining us. Pastor Perkins, welcome. Hey, guys. Uh, sorry I missed uh, the message, but um, I always listen to Grace Hour, and I can't resist calling in for some reason. Good. Uh, but uh, I wanted to mention that I had contacted Greater Grace church up in Toronto, Canada, on behalf of some Las Veganites that had moved up there. And uh, Pastor Niazzi asked me to do a Zoom meeting with him yesterday, and um, I, I, I accepted, and we did a Zoom meeting with some of our people here with some of his people up there. And I was astounded at his church. Hmm. He, has, he has people from all over the world that are living in the Toronto area, and even Winnipeg joined us, too. Two Chinese girls from Winnipeg that had met our ministry in China, um, a, a lady from Ghana who lives now in the Toronto area was on the Zoom call. She lives in Toronto. Another, uh, some people from Baku living in the Toronto area, Turkey, and I think another one from Kazakhstan. And it was, I was just like shocked, like the, at the reach of greater grace all over the world. And I just wanted to mention that the Zoom meeting was terrific. It was so amazing and edifying. And also, Pastor Love, we prayed for that border to open up. So Amen. I just wanted to mention that. Beautiful. Yeah, they have an international ministry there in Canada. Um, I'm not surprised to hear that, but uh, I think it's wonderful you had the opportunity to share with them and. Who knows, maybe that will open the door for more of that until the border opens. Amen. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, gentlemen, for your uh, your ministries. Hey, Pastor Perkins, I heard a, top, a, a word that I've never heard before, Las Veganites. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what you are? <laughs> I, that's pretty special. Uh, you got that in Bible school, didn't you? <laughs> you got well, it. you know, I mean, we had... 
we had Pastor Vieter here last a couple of weeks, uh, two weekends ago, and I learned a lot of terminology I've never heard before. So uh, <laughs> you got to be careful that they don't, uh, you know, mistake you for the veganites. Oh no, no, I, I believe me, steak is my favorite food. So, wow. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, the Bible says, what does it say that, uh, you know, we can eat meat and everything with Thanksgiving, even lobster, by the way. Are you sure about that? Oh, yeah. Amen. I'm positive. <laughs> you sound like one of those free believers. Yeah. <laughs> I've been set free by Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm not, you know. And the, and the first place is the kitchen, huh? The first huh? place, the first place is the kitchen. Huh? You set free there. I am totally set <laughs> Perfect. Oh, uh, Pastor John Perkins uh, out in Las Vegas, Nevada. Thanks for joining us. And friends, when you think about that city, sometimes you may be, you know, you see a, a, or hear about a television commercial. Everybody, you know, uh, they want everybody to come out to Las Vegas and lose all their money. Well, next time you see one of those commercials, think of Pastor Perkins, the ministry there. Pray for their outreach. Amen. And instead of giving it to a casino, you can just, uh, you know, you can donate to the church. There you go. Beautiful. We, we'll accept it. Amen. Put your money It'll where God's heart investment. is. There it is. You'll make far better use of it than the casinos will. I think so. Amen. <laughs> Pastor John, thanks for joining us. Uh, yes, sir. Good day, you guys. Bye-bye. Take care. All right, friends, we're getting ready to wrap our Monday edition of the Grace Hour up, and we do appreciate you tuning in. Those of you that joined us on Facebook Live, we appreciate it. YouTube Live, thanks so much for joining us. And of course, uh, those of you that have been listening live on the internet around the globe at gracehour.org, uh, it's always a pleasure to be with you. And again, we're just getting this this theme started, just underway today. Today's the first day. Tomorrow, Pastor Shallow will be with us in the studio, and we'll develop it uh, as the week progresses, and I think it's such a great theme because, again, um, our hearts and minds need to be set on things above. Uh, if not, well, we can have a world of trouble down here below, but when our hearts and minds are stayed on Him, we can have God's perfect peace in the midst of all that may be seemingly unraveling around us. Pastor Brown, thanks for joining us. Thank you, sir, for having me. And friends, thank you for tuning in. We, As I said, we'll be back tomorrow in less than 24 hours. You can join us for the next live edition of the Grace Hour. And then, of course, uh, as the week progresses, we'll get into Thursday's broadcast with Pastor Stevens. His message this week is entitled, A Fixed Heart. You won't want to miss that as well. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day, friends. Until tomorrow, may God bless. Thanks for listening to The Grace Hour. Our live program airs weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Grace Hour is a ministry of the Greater Grace Church. You are invited to visit Greater Grace at 6025 Moravia Park Drive, Baltimore, Maryland, 21206. For more information, go to gracehour.org or call 1-800-338-7060.